Howdy everyone, A. A. Ron here. Today I've got another product review, unboxing, assembly, yada yada for you. It's the Bosch RA1171 benchtop router table. I did pick it up this evening from Lowe's for $169. Uh, I would have gone the Amazon route, simply out of spite for the big blue box. But I bought one of those sort of sketchy $20 off coupons that you can find on Amazon. I don't really know where they come from. It didn't work in this case, because this thing was already on sale. Usually they do work. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll place a link in the description below. Again, I've had good luck with them in the past, but I don't know where they come from. I don't know who's making these things, but for some reason, they work most of the time. Anyways, um, oh yeah, also if you catch a glance of these later. Don't judge me too much. It's like after hours and I'm kind of doing this after everyone went to bed. So hopefully that doesn't ruin my credibility too much. Other than that, let's get to it. The first thing we notice is that the unit does not come assembled. It's almost like Bosch took Ikea out to the barn and nine months later this little guy was born. Feels like a little bit of both mom and dad. First out of the womb is the bit guard followed by a bag of installation hardware. There appears to be a lot in there so this assembly might end up being more involved than I had planned for. Next we find the power switch assembly. In the box it is located right next to the nicely included feather boards and tabletop inserts. Below that is the uber beefy fence assembly. This is nicely made out of a very decent sized chunk of extruded and anodized aluminum. Rounding out the hardware section of this unboxing are a couple of 1 16th inch jointing shims. If you don't know what those are, feel free to skip to the timestamp now flashing on your screen to see them in action. Setting all that aside, and we're now getting to the bones of the Bokia baby. Out first is the table's bottom plate. As would be expected, we see all holes are pre-drilled and countersunk. Below this item is the instruction manual. Sadly, when it comes to items requiring assembly, these can't be immediately tossed. Next, we've got the front door and its pre-installed non-mortised hinges. You've got to wonder, why they chose this one item to install for you. Of all the things you're expected to put together, someone at Bosch decided that hinges were too much for the average consumer. I'm not complaining, just curious. Now, sharing the cell with the front door is the back plate and its pre-milled dust collection port and cord slot. One more level down and we're now looking at the two side pieces. Not much to say about these, they're made out of laminated MDF, just like the rest of the unit. Our final item out of the box is the tabletop itself with the router mounting plate pre-installed. The miter track is set loose in its dado. I found this out the hard way when I went to move it off camera and it slid right out. No damage done, but be careful. With everything out of the box, it's on to some late night assembly action. The left and right side panels are installed first. For the sake of my sanity, and due to laziness, I'm going to bin the included 4mm Allen key and instead use my driver. Also, anytime I'm driving screws into low quality wood substrates, I, uh, like the MDF here, I always like to set the threads with a little wood glue, tight bond 2 in this case. It works a bit like Loctite in a metal to metal application. In the past, I've done some experiments and found it really does make the screw much harder to back out. The bottom plate goes on next. Here I'm using the same glue and screw method as before. Oddly, the holes on the underside are countersunk, while the side ones are not. Seems like a weird place to save a penny on Bosch's part. Also, don't be like me and forget that there's actually six holes on the bottom that need a mate. After assembly was complete, I was left with the dreaded extra screw and had to go hunting for what I missed. Next up, we'll go ahead and install the switched outlet. It's nice that Bosch included an extra plug on the back, but as I quickly realized, it's in a really awkward position. I remedied that problem the next day. I'll show you how I did that in a few minutes. 
To be honest, the whole electrical assembly feels pretty flimsy. I think it's pretty obvious Bosch went with some cheap off-the-shelf components here. On the flip side of that statement is the fact that this means that replacement parts should be easy to come by. A quick Amazon search yields several results that look like they'd work. I'm sure an in-depth search would lead one to an exact replacement. After getting power mounted up, we'll go ahead and attach the tabletop to our mostly assembled cabinet. To do this, the miter track needs to be moved out of the way. It's become obvious why this wasn't factory installed. Now that we've got 5 sixths of a cube put together, we'll screw on the door and call this portion of assembly complete. So here is a really minor discrepancy. The instructional diagram shows a mortise side of the hinge being attached to the cabinet, but the factory assembled door has it reversed. No big deal at all, but it did cause a double take as I was assembling to make sure I was installing correctly. After the door is mounted, one will need to attach the magnet to hold it in place. I am not a fan of the prescribed mounting screw here. It's a 5 8 inch flathead. These types of screws are meant for countersunk applications, not hard flat plastic. Instead, I swapped out my own 3 quarter inch hex head screw, which I thought was much more appropriate. In all honesty, if you were to overdrive the recommended screw, you'd likely crack the magnet's mounting flanges. Next up, we'll start putting together the mostly assembled fence and its included accessories. I have mixed feelings here. On one hand, I like it because its fit and finish are excellent. The aluminum extrusion is massive and stiffer than a porn star when the freshman class of fluffers arrives. Also, whatever material they veneer on top of the MDF to make the fence facing, and tabletop for that matter, is nicely slick. Noticeably more so than your run-of-the-mill uh, melamine. So, that's good. On the other hand, I'm really not a fan at all of Bosch's use of proprietary hardware. Just look at these wonky feather boards. They're attached to the fence via a quarter-inch carriage bolt and some weird unidirectional spacers. This presents two problems. First, they're a pain in the rear to install. Second, you've got to get creative if you want to use any third-party equipment. The RA1171 uses a non-standard T-Track that accepts quarter-inch carriage bolt heads instead of the standard hex ones. Additionally, they're recessed about a quarter inch, so you'll need your own spacers. I think it's totally possible to jerry-rig a solution, but I'm left wondering why Bokia felt it necessary to make difficult. Why not just use universal T-Track and flush mount it? To install the dust collection port, you'll need to move the rail facings out of the way. Out of the box, this piece of plastic felt quite flimsy, but once secured to the rail, it felt quite solid. So I guess that's good. The bit guard is installed in the same way as the feather boards, with a couple of carriage bolts and some Bosch specific adapters. Next, it's time to affix the router to the mounting plate. I'll be using a Bosch 1617, which this table is set up perfectly for. However, don't forget to be smarter than the machine screws. The factory routing plate is secured with four screws, however, the router table uses only three. I didn't know this, so I spent a few minutes snipe hunting for a magical mounting position that didn't exist. One reason I really like this router made it to this table is because out of the box, it enables table-side fine-tuning. It's not quite as elegant as some $200 plus router lifts, but it gets the job done all the same. After dropping the router and plate into its recess, it was time to level. I did read a couple of reviews claiming this task was hard. I don't know what those lunks were smoking, but I found it satisfyingly easy and precise. Each corner has both a mounting and opposing leveling screw. Use a straight edge to flush it out and then tighten it down. It took just a couple minutes and the system works great. I then went ahead and checked for square, lining up the fence on the zero mark and dropping in the speed square and I'll call this good to go. So now that we've got everything put together, leveled and squared, I started to just look around. One area that immediately caught my eye as an area in desperate need of improvement was the whole cord situation. For starters, the factory cutout edges are way too sharp. 
After, move, after only moving the cord in and out a couple of times, there was already some wear, so I grabbed a file and took it down. Next on the agenda of improvements was to take care of the auxiliary plug's awkward location. Let's be realistic, nobody wants to snake their shop vac's cord inside the cabinet every time. To remedy this, I installed a 4-port yellow jacket block. I chose this model because of its metal case, appropriate amperage rating, and near perfect cord length. Also, it only cost me $12 on Amazon. I'll place a link to it down in the description. It's an affiliate link for which I'll earn a small commission. I really don't make much off this channel, but every dollar here and there is greatly appreciated. To mount the power block, I first made a photocopy of the backside to act as a template. And by the way, this technique works for anything you're trying to mount. After taping it down, you just use your center punch to mark the drill holes and you're perfectly lined up. No more guessing at mounting screw locations. After that's all mounted, I'll go ahead and use some 3 8 inch clips and tack the cord down. I'll also do the same inside. Now, if I want to use my shop vac or any other accessories, like maybe a light, and switch it alongside my router, I won't be snaking the cord inside and turning my head upside down and backwards hunting for a plug. Speaking of the vacuum, let's talk about dust extraction for a moment. For most people, the wet dry vac will be the way to go, but here's the problem. The included dust port is two and a half inches. Let's consider for a moment that most new homes run 20 amp branch circuits. Older ones are limited to 15. A Bosch 1617 router pulls 12 amps by itself, while a full size shop vac can pull 9 plus. Adding those two up and we have a problem. The solution is to run them on separate circuits or simply run a smaller vacuum. I'm running a portable one that uses a 1 and 7 8 inch hose so I need to adapt. To do so, I'm using a Powertech dust control flex cuff in combination with a reducer bushing. For anyone who's ever made this connection, you know it's somehow a lot harder than it needs to be. I wish the industry would get its shit together and better standardize, but for now, wonky adapters are what we've got to deal with. Amazon link for this is also below. Okay, a couple more items and then I'll stop drawing out this video. After you set up and before you go ahead and use, take a minute to throw all those spare parts you'll inevitably have in some Ziploc bags or storage device of your choice. You've got a cabinet style router table. Might as well take advantage of that storage place. Last thing to do before running some stock is to snap in the plate inserts. Honestly, they feel quite crabby. They're made out of very thin plastic and just snap into place. I get the impression they're something of a consumable. It just seems like after a few insert and remove cycles, those flimsy little tabs will snap off. It's only a matter of time. Luckily, OEM replacements are available for just a few units of government computer generated fiat currency on Amazon. Finally running some stock through it, and I really like it. Aside from a few cheap feeling components and my general dislike of proprietary hardware, the whole package feels solid and works very well. You'll quickly realize that at least one additional feather board is a must. Luckily, unlike the fence track, the miter track is a bit more universal. My bench dog feather board that I pulled directly off my table saw fit perfectly. Also, in something of a nice surprise, so did the miter slide from the same saw. So making angled routes is no problem for the Bosch RA1171. As far as the bit guard goes, it seems like it just gets in the way. In my opinion, having it there is worse than not, because it quickly becomes opaque with fine wood dust. I opted to remove mine. To my way of thinking, an unguarded but visible bit is safer than a sort of guarded but hard to see one. Now, as a proud Bosch router table owner, you have the luxury of using your setup as a small scale jointer. In fact, Bosch even provides shims to facilitate this. In effect, this raises one fence 1 16th of an inch higher than the other. 
Under this setup, a small amount of material is removed from some stock in preparation for glue up. We'll first loosen the two retaining bolts on the left fence only. Then insert the shim or shims and tighten back down. Next, let's install a straight cut router bit and set the left fence flush with it. Here, I'm using a white side spiral two flute CNC quality bit that I consider just fantastic. If you've ever wondered if there was an alternative to Freud, this is the brand. So take this piece of wood for example. It looks like it went around with Mike Tyson in his prime, or a couple rounds with him in his post cocaine and hooker days. Let's see if a pass or two in our router table and jointer clothing can't clean things up. looks a little better, right? One final thing I wanted to touch on is dust control expectations. Even with a vac running every second the router was, I still got quite a bit of debris in the cabinet. Far less than I would have had without it, but a lot nonetheless. So overall, I'm very happy with the Bosch RA1171 benchtop router table. Generally, I always like to ask myself the question, could I have built something of similar quality myself for less money. And in this case, I'd have to say no. Just a budget fence, identical mounting plate, and 48 inches of T-Track would cost $126, leaving only $42 for everything else. So we might be close cost-wise, but we're definitely not close effort-wise, especially when we consider both paths still lead to a budget item. I summarize my likes as follows. Overall build feels solid, even if a few individual components feel cheap. The aluminum frame is massive and girthy. If I were to find this table no longer met my needs and I built myself another, I'd be pretty tempted to keep the fence. The mounting plate is nice, heavy gauge cast aluminum, and seems genuinely universal. The instructions provided a very comprehensive list of compatible routers and they're even nice enough to include mounting screws for all of them. On the other hand, there were a few items I was not happy with. The power switch feels really flimsy. I get the impression one accidentally hard pull could snap it off. I'm already in the habit of being very gentle with it. The fence adjustment track, or lack thereof, is a complete cop-out on Bosch's part. They only include a couple of slots in the MDF. They really should have included aluminum T-Track and will likely be the next thing I upgrade. Finally, the use of proprietary hardware is just annoying. It works, but you wish they had gone a more universal route. And that will about do her for today. Again, Amazon associate links to all products discussed in this video are below. Use of them is greatly appreciated. I don't make much from my affiliate sales, but the couple dollars here and there I see from Amazon referred sales is really motivating. Okay then, hope everything was helpful. Take care.